Yo, it is the Plan C Podcast coming at you with a new episode. It is a Tuesday night. It is right now about 10.50 coming at you live. Uh... I'm uh I'm hanging out. I'm all right. You know, I got work in the morning. Well, not in the morning, but at noon. Um, I'm chilling. About to get this great ass podcast out for you guys. Uh, just doing the um the second part of the Jordan doc I talked about earlier. Um, it is now over. And we're going to get into that in just a bit. I first just wanted to remind you guys to check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Twitter at Plan C Pod underscores between the two words. Thank you so much for checking us out. You know, like, rate, uh, subscribe, review, uh, whether it's good or bad. Want to know what's up with you know how you guys are feeling about this pod because well i we care about what you guys think and want to make podcast content that you guys will listen to so check that out uh if you will uh want to give a shout out to all the first responders thank you for busting your balls during this time it is just absolutely heroic what people are doing and how they're working during this time what else do I have? We've got some new stickers coming out. That is actually happening. Uh, we're going to be posting them on the Instagram very shortly. So if you want one, just hit us up. We'll send you some. Um, you know, it's just us putting a stamp on an envelope and sending it along. So not not all that hard. So again, if you want some, we will absolutely send you some. Uh, let's see... Hope everyone is staying safe and just kind of just staying comfortable during this time of uh, potential discomfort for a lot of people. I hope everyone is getting their government money because you're goddamn right. The government better help us out because a lot of us don't have jobs. Um, And yeah, so I hope you stick around for the entire podcast. Thank you so much for. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I completely forgot. I blanked. Uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, we stream live on our YouTube. So check out Plan C Podcast on YouTube. We usually stream from about 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, right now, we're playing Danganronpa, which is a Japanese murder mystery game. It's really heating up. It's, you know, I, I really like it. Um, I'm getting into it and we and uh, we I say we it's just me playing when I am playing uh, I play a little drinking game and it's pretty fun anyway I am sort of just going on a little too long here is the episode talking about the second part of Jordan hope or not Jordan but the last dance hope y'all enjoy here we go all right here we go. So I was um, was doing notes on this on Monday, so yesterday, and because I, I was originally going to do this last night, you know, just get this close enough to when the pod or not the pod when the documentary was actually done. Um, but I got home from work and I was pretty tired, and and one thing leads to another. And anyway, I was typing out notes and. I was kind of just, you know, type, 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 nonstop. And then I ended up with six pages and over 1,500 words. So, you know, here we go. <laughs> Stick with me. It'll be, um, it'll, we'll, we'll take some lefts and rights. I have, you know, lots of fun points, blah, 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 blah. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> so the last stance. Uh, I believe the last episode we left off was, was like episode four, um, so we're just going to sort of continue from that time frame and go from there. And and, and I might have um, thoughts on just the bulls during that time overall that I introduce. So the last dance. Uh, you know, it is over and I am sad because that is live. Or not, you know, it's not live sports, but it is sports that is now not there for me, which is, you know... It's, it's something that I definitely miss during this time of so much free time because usually you know, I'm watching sports. Anyway, um, some thoughts. <sighs> 
Holy shit, Jordan is still so cool. He is still so insanely cool. Like, I don't know if there's anyone else just just able to handle that media attention and just that attention so well. Uh, he carried himself so insanely well. He had charisma that was just unmatched. He was a god. Um... And that's just, and and that's just that. That's you can see that in the documentary. You know, he's hanging out with his security guards. He's barely has alone time, so on and so forth. Um, I just, I just want to say also, if you do like sports and you haven't seen this, um, you need to, you need to check it out. It is coming to Netflix soon. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, you know, Jordan. <clears throat> he's just on another level with everyone else. Uh, and it's to the level where you can legitimately ask the question if he is the greatest individual sports player ever. Uh, and just, you know, six titles, that's really hard to argue with, especially being undefeated in the finals. Do you know how hard it is to not only win a championship, but to do it six times and to do it every single time you go to that championship? That's insane. Um, and just it, it, the, the documentary gets into some interesting points, you know, really like Michael as an individual and just how isolated he was that he never had alone time. Uh, and even when he lo was alone, as I mentioned, he was still surrounded by security. And you can see that he's hanging out in the United Center, you know, so bored that or not not bored, but he's betting on a coin game where they throw it to the wall because, you know, what else is he going to do? Um, you know, did he ever really get a moment of peace? No, not really. And that that really sucks how hard it must have been to be Michael Jordan. Uh, it's just interesting overall that they didn't go more into his family and stuff about his ex-wife, which, you know, part of that I get. Part of that it's like, well, you know, maybe it's part of the story. But if, you know, you're the ex-wife of somebody who is so relevant today, you know, are, is your side of the story really going to be heard? Or, you know, it would Michael have wanted that story to be told? And, you know, I don't really know. Um, and, and the kids, they, they make an appearance a little bit, so that, that was nice to see. Um... But, you know, not all that much. They only they, they only really got them in at the end there. Uh, I thought it was very interesting that he talked about his dad at the length he did. Uh, and that he talked about his gambling uh, supposed addiction. Which I, I, I thought was great because you get to hear uh, MJ actually say that, you know, oh no, I wasn't suspended by David Stern. And that had never really been said before, really. Um, yeah, uh, I, I also thought still, still absolutely legendary, legendarily competitive and well, yeah, I, I mean, you can still see that in the way he talks and the way he talks about other people and the way he, you know, was talking about that 99 season that, you know, it still haunts him that they broke up the team. Um, I felt that Jordan got better as the episodes uh, went on. He's just absolutely involved in just helping tell the story. Um, one thing, though, I was like, did Jordan actually feel about the competition the way that he showed? You know, is that calculated or is that natural? You know, like laughing at Gary Payton when he said he had a problem with him. You know, is that just showing off? I don't know, but... The laughs seem pretty authentic, so I don't know. Uh, really surprising to see MJ call the 98 Pacers the toughest team beyond the Pistons that he had a playoff series against. You know, you just think that, oh, wow, like, the Knicks really beat the shit out of him. Uh, and did they, did they just, like, fall off the face of the earth? And MJ faced the Knicks a lot. I think, like, five separate series they were playing that's that's pretty incredible um larry bird meeting mj after game seven and basically being like oh fuck you bitch uh as a way of congratulating him that was pretty amazing you know showing that 
Bird knows he lost, and he is humble slash funny in his defeat. Yeah, you know, good good for LB. That that makes him look pretty good. Um, some more stuff before I get into like real specifics, just in terms of sort of year by year. Um, and, and Michael Michael Jordan is just he is just a meme making machine and sort of just like a content making machine. Uh, just so many good sound bites, so many good just like gifts. You know, 30 second clips you could throw in there. Uh, yeah, truly, truly, truly just unique in that sense. Uh, also great that he was emotional uh, in a way that showed who he really was. You know, he's getting upset or not getting upset, but he's getting emotional about, you know, describing winning at all costs uh, and just talking about, you know, oh, you know, I'm not a nice guy, blah, blah, blah. I thought that was really, really interesting to see that side of Michael that was like, you know what? I'm not these things, but I fucking won, and I was a bad man because of it. And just so deeply intense about basketball. All right, so now going to get into the specifics of, well, just, you know, in, for me, what was my um, more specific stuff just... I don't want to say episode by episode because I didn't break it up that way. I sort of broke it up in the parts of MJ's career. Um, yeah. So during the first three-peat, nobody was going to stop them at all. Like, nobody was. Jordan was at the peak of his powers physically, and nobody was stopping him no matter who it was. The 92 team also might be the best team ever. You know, you can talk about 91. You could talk about 96. Um... Maybe even 97, because, you know, that team also won 67 games. But, anyway, I just think that there's greater bench depth on this team than most of the others. MJ and Scotty are just at their physical peak, and there are times this season where they throw them out and they have them full court pressing the opponent's point guard. And just can you imagine two of the best defenders of all time not just like generational all time and just two of the smartest players of all time trapping you as you're trying to dribble the ball up the court that's that's fucking impossible and to do it for long stretches as they did that's that's physically just insane and insane told to ask and they and they were able to do it so they could you know they could play a lot of ways and just really fuck with you um i think horace grant being there um is is so big and just underrated you know you look at Horace Grant versus like Dennis Rodman and you're definitely getting a lot more from Horace Grant um than you are later <laughs> wow I can't believe I just did that uh you're getting more from Horace Grant than you are later on Dennis Rodman because later on Dennis Rodman is you know he's not scoring that much the defense is good it's not as great as it used to be um, he's older, his, his, his attention is elsewhere. You know, you're not, you're not getting these problems with Horace Grant. Uh, Phil Jackson also just unleashing the triangle on the world. This was only, uh, I believe it was his second full season. I, second full season or third full season? Anyway, you know, the, the triangle is still relatively new to the world. It's not, you know, world renowned or not, I don't want to say world renowned is it now, but like you ask a bit. A basketball fan, you know, oh, triangle offense. They're, they're going to know, like, oh, Phil Jackson, Bulls, Lakers, blah, 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 blah. Um, they're, you know, they're also still younger. Um, you know, 98, 99, or 98, uh, 97, 98, and so on. They're older. They don't have their legs beneath them so much, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they all, they, in the regular season, they, they want a fuck ton of games, beat good teams throughout. You know, Bird is still in there. He's he's old and hobbled, but he's still in there. You know, Detroit is still, I believe there's a playoff contender that year. Cavs, Knicks, so on and so forth. Uh, in the playoffs, beat really good teams. Uh, Cleveland team that had nearly won 60 games. The Knicks that <clears throat> had Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley, John Starks, these 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 bruisers of teams, Portland as well in the finals, you know, they didn't, they lost some games in the playoffs, you know, they ended up going 16 and seven, but you know, it's still, it's, it's 
I mean, this that 92 team is just so good. Just throughout, and, yeah. Um, moving on to the 93 season, I don't have a ton on this because I don't think it's all that much different from the 92 season besides, you know, there being another year. So obviously there's more miles on Michael. He's a little more mentally checked out. He's really tired. Um, yeah, so I think the Sun Series is a really good example of the confidence that the Bulls showed at this time. You know, during the finals, Michael is golfing with fucking Charles Barkley the night before um, the finals. And, and you know, I I, I, I fucking love Charles Barkley. I'm a, I, I think I would say I'm a Barkley guy, but like, I don't know. You know, this just shows how different Michael was. He could go out, he could party, he could do all this, and then the next day he could he could just give the guy the business that he was just hanging out with the night before. Michael knew he was so good that he could fuck around the night before, like during the finals, before the finals, whatever, and still just, just go out and drop 50 if he needed to. It's absolutely insane. Um... Moving on to the one and a half seasons off, you know, this wasn't because of gambling. David Stern didn't suspend him. Mike was bored, tired, and had a lot on his mind with his father had gone missing at that point, you know, if we're talking about the off season. Um, and then later in August, he died. So, yeah, no shit he didn't want to play basketball. Uh, I think the people who say that he would have, you know, done eight in a row... I, I, it's just a stupid ass. That's just a stupid ass statement to make because you just look at you just look at what was happening at the time to Mike. You know, he he was tired. He was mentally tired again. His dad had just died um, before this before the ninety four season, and it's just it's in it's insane to think that like oh yeah like he would have risen up and he would have you know face the Knicks that later that year because that was one of the better Knicks teams that made the finals uh they beat the Bulls without Michael and you know then you gotta say okay well if you beat the Knicks then you gotta go up against the um the Rockets with Hakeem and I I just don't think that that would happen it's it's not it's not so much shitting on Michael it's more just like well, take a look at the situation. He had been playing deep into, you know, the season for, I think, five seasons to that point because they had won three championships, lost to Detroit before that, and lost to Detroit before that. So that's that's three, or that's five Eastern Conference Finals to that point, back to back to back to back to back. So it's, I don't know, it's just incredibly tough. Um, I thought the baseball stuff was great. Uh, it was cool to see Terry Francona, just, you know, fun little thing about him. I grew up hating him. Uh, big Yankee fan. I grew up absolutely hating him. Uh, and my dad is also from Chicago, so my dad's a Cubs fan. And when the Cubs won the World Series, uh, at one point during the World Series, they were down in the series 3-1 to one to the Cleveland Indians. Or uh, the Cleveland... I'm going to say Cleveland Tribe, because I, I don't like I don't like the... The, the the name Indians that's you know that's, that's not that cool. Um, he he was manager of the tribe of the Cleveland tribe, <laughs> uh, and that I don't know that's just that's just really interesting. You know, luckily Cubs were able to break the curse. You know, and he didn't prevent us. That didn't happen. So we're okay with Terry now, kind of. Um, you know, at one point. He says that MJ maybe would have made the majors if he had more at bats, but because of the strike, it didn't happen. You know who knows, but Mike definitely does have the work ethic, work ethic to maybe make it. You know you, you see that he was learning how to hit, and he was in the in he was hitting balls all the damn time. He said he had blisters on his hands during games. I, I don't know. That's just classic MJ shit. Um, the way he comes back, also classic MJ shit. You know, the press release is literally just, I'm back. Um, comes back, you know, 
couple months before the or it's like it's like a month before the playoffs begin um and they they go up against this magic team in 95 who now has horace grant has shaquille o'neal has penny hardaway and mj's not in basketball shape the 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 bulls aren't as the bulls are not as good you know scotty's didn't play that well um but you know mj is still great in that series uh just didn't have a proficient big man so Shaq and the penny killed them you know without rebounding they completely lose that series um mj is also just absolutely more tired at the end of games uh so i don't want to i don't want to say that peak mj would have been able to beat this team but i don't know i would trust peak mj a lot more than i would um the mj that we got to see there oh excuse me real quick <coughs> uh, excuse me, America. Just had a quick cough. All right, so moving on then to the 96 season, 95-96 uh, season. So I just want to say that the 72-10 72, 72 record, I feel like it's watered down. It's definitely diluted. Um, and this is because expansion had happened the previous year. They added Toronto and Vancouver. Um, so, you know, that means the talent gets absolutely gets spread out in the league overall, um, makes it easier to win a fuck ton of games when these teams are so shit. Uh, cause you know, the expansion draft was kind of bare bones. The way they did it was you cannot pick from eight protected players on each team. So these new teams are getting everyone's eighth best player at best. So you then... Like, now you have these two teams who are going to be absolute garbage, and then the rest of the teams aren't going to have the same exact structure as they did because on a championship team, you know, the eighth best player can potentially make that difference. It's stupid, but, you know, it could be a locker room guy or, you know, a three-point sniper that defenses have to respect or whatever. Still, I believe the argument can be made for them being the best ever. Um... A better one could have been made had they swept the Sonics in the finals, though. Uh, they were up 3 nothing. Uh, <laughs> George Carl shot out real quick. Uh, I'm actually going to take that back. I like George Carl, kind of. I just don't think he is good at modern basketball. Anyway, um, you know, and then Gary Payton switches on to Michael, and he doesn't do as well, and they lose two games. But then they lose game, or then they win game six, so it's all good. Um, I I do believe that Mike genuinely didn't have a problem with Gary Payton, or at least like that's what he thinks. Um, like yes, there is a statistical difference between Mike being guarded by GP and him not, but. I don't know. I think that there's just like a certain mentality of like, I'm the best. I'm going to get it done no matter who's in front of me. I, I, I think Mike was Mike was winning no matter what. And uh, yeah. So moving on to the 97 season. Um, so the perception. So at that point, it's kind of like, OK, Mike has done something that no team has done since um, the uh, the Celtics, right? He's won three in a row, and he just came back, and he and they just they just they eviscerated everyone in the league last year. So he's probably the best player ever. So that's that, kind of in the beginning. That's that's kind of that's kind of how it looks. So ninety seven, he goes out. He does not win MVP as he did the previous year because of the press push for Karl Malone to win it. Karl uh, Malone would go on to win one more in 99 in the lockout shortened season, but won it this year. So, you know, then the Bulls and the Jazz end up in the finals together. So what does Michael do? He uses that as motivation to fuel him to fight versus Utah in the finals. You know, Michael had a weird thing with motivation. Uh, if he couldn't find an edge, he would make one up. And then would use it to make himself into that man. That bad motherfucking man. And 
just somehow always rose to the occasion with true motivation or not. You know, there's that story about the um, the guy on the Wizards who dropped close to 40 points on him, and then he, Michael said that, oh, like he came up to him and put his shoulder around him, said good game. And then the next story, he scored as many points on him as he did in, that, in the first half. So... And then it all turned out to be a lie. So it, it's just, it's stuff like that that's really great. You know, you have the Malone stuff where it's like, oh, you didn't give me MVP? Well, that's fine. That's that's fine, but I'm just going to show you who the MVP is. Um, just some, uh, some flu game thoughts. Uh, Michael clarifies that it should be called the food poisoning game. And personally, just, just going to say, I feel like if you're in a hotel anywhere, and you don't think they'd have food for the biggest star in the world, like, come on. Like, maybe they were just salty jazz fans or whatever, but come on. So the story goes is that they order a pizza um, from somewhere, the only place open, you know, and they say, like, five, the the, the delivery guy is five guys deep um, when they deliver it. Um... So, like, everyone's sus about the pizza, but then only MJ eats it, and then by, like, 2 a.m., he's puking. He's, 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 he thinks he's, like, just, he's, he's, I don't know, he's got terrible-ass food poisoning. If you've ever had terrible-ass food poisoning where you're just, like, you're evacuating everything, it fucking sucks. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that, you know, the man didn't feel like he was dying, because that shit makes you feel like you're dying. <laughs> um, you know, so he comes in the next day, and uh, you, you'd think they'd, like, attack him on defense in game five, but nope. <laughs> uh, he just, he just, he, he turns into that bad motherfucking man and still drops a W on the Jazz. Um, obviously, this story seems a little crafted. You know, every, everyone who was telling it said the word pizza a lot. Um, but five guys to deliver a pizza? I mean, maybe they're curious fans or what, but definitely a weird thing, whether that was true or not. Um, did they maybe put Epicac on the pizza or, like, just bad ingredients? I don't know. Um, personally, I just kind of have a theory where it's like, don't trust pizza that doesn't come from a major U.S. city. So if your U.S. city doesn't have over, mm, let's say, let's say 75, 70, 750,000 people. If your city doesn't have that many people, I don't trust your pizza. That That's just, that's just a fact. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mormons making pizza apparently just didn't go well. Just kidding. I have family with Mormon connections, so or not connections, but Mormon roots. So let me, let me not, let me not, let me not. Anyway, so Jordan goes out, wins the '97 Finals, the ne- that next game, um, and you know, then it's just like, oh, holy shit, Michael's the best. Uh, and '98 almost doesn't happen because Jerry Krause doesn't want to bring Phil back. He wants to trade Scotty, uh, blah, 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 blah. Which, like, don't even get me started on how stupid that is. Uh, so moving moving on to the 98 season, which is sort of the focus, uh, well, not sort of the focus, which is the focus of this documentary because they knew it was going to be the last season. Um, you know, we see, we see the journey of this entire team throughout the season, and it's pretty cool. You we see them face the Nets. Shout out the Nets uh, in the playoffs. See them face the Pacers in the East Finals. That was really cool. And well, I, I don't know. It's just it's very interesting to see how Michael went about this. You know, with the scrutiny placed upon his shoulders and the weight placed upon his shoulders. You know, they do make it back to the um, to the NBA Finals. Uh, going seven against the Pacers, but then winning that game seven against the Pacers, uh, and then in the in the finals, you know the Jazz, they're tougher mentally and physically. You know they're they really feel like they're ready this year, and it's just like, oop, nope, MJ turns into that man again, uh, and it all comes down to that 
those final moments in game six where MJ has just like, he's just mastered the craft and he has to control the entire game, uh, score most of his team points play some great defense, and, like, keep it slow. Keep it slow. And, you know, you look around him, uh, you know, he looked around him, and Scotty was done. His back had gotten fucked up, and he could barely move. He was lucky to be out there. He was literally on the court as a decoy. Dennis, as I said earlier, you know, by this time, he was lucky to be on an NBA team, uh, just falling off in terms of ability and his want to play. You know, he's going to do WWE in the middle of the finals, which is fucking insane. Um, I think Carl Malone needs to be so much better in this series. You know, you're supposed to be so damn good. You have, like, the all-time assist leader throwing you perfect-ass entry passes, and you're going up against Dennis Rodman, who is withering, and you still you still can't get it done. It takes Malone really a while to just get into it. And this had been a Jazz team that had, you know, had deep playoff runs before. And you'd really think he would have stepped up, you know, in the NBA Finals. And again, he eventually had some good games, but a little too soon, too late. Um, cool to see John Stockton here. Uh, not here, but in the uh, documentary. It was he, he looks like an accountant, um, but you know he, he was he was a great ball player in his day. Um, yeah, I also thought it was cool to see the images of this sort of similar press conference as you know Malone and Stockton are waiting for Michael to finish, and then you see Michael come out that he shakes both their hands, uh, and then later on when you see. Uh, Malone go in the bus and shake Jordan's hand like good for Malone in this in this in this game to do that like that is that is some serious shit to do um yeah you know it's it it, it, it it's just it's just Michael in full dominance of his game um you know and 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 he doesn't have the same legs under him anymore and he's he's not that man he used to be but it doesn't matter because you know he still got it done um and on, on that final shot no he doesn't put push off as bob costas brilliantly states no difference between that and a maitre d showing someone to their table perfect analogy because you can literally see jordan's hand is limp like he's not pushing it wouldn't have sort of bounced off the heel had he been pushing, as most people say he was. Um, yeah, and you know, it's one of the most I iconic shots ever, if not the most iconic shot, and it closes a book on a story that was the Michael Jordan Bulls. Um, I also thought Scotty and Dennis knowing that the, last, that the last shot wasn't theirs and it wasn't going anywhere else besides Michael and they were just like, yep, we're going to get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> I thought that was pretty incredible uh, and just, just very funny. Uh, I also think, you know, even if this does go to seven, I, Mike, Michael is winning in seven. Like, come on, it's Michael fucking Jordan. Uh, he's just always guaranteed victory. And, and the only time fear is shown is like, when he said that he saw that Scotty was out, like that was that was the only time um, that that shit was shown. Uh, you know, he was just that dude. You know, just overall, uh, is holy shit. This this was this this documentary was so so well done. Um, you know, I've missed live sports, so maybe I'm not able to be as you know I, it's a weird perspective to have right now because you know we're 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 yearning for live sports and we can't have them so you know we had this instead so maybe i revere this differently because it's sort of a bias i don't know i obviously i'm going to go back and rewatch this but it I, ugh, so good not i i can't think of a mistake right now um but it, there weren't many, if any. Um, Steve Kerr's part had me in tears, uh, and I thought it was perfectly placed for the story it was paralleling. You know, uh, they talk about how uh, Steve's dad was in Lebanon, Lebanon and got killed, um, 
and they they sort of parallel it with the you know with the rise of Steve and then the shot that he makes in games uh uh I don't remember what game it was but it was in the 97 finals and it's the game winner um I I just thought that was absolutely great uh I thought there was great representation of the role players who succeeded uh no Brad Sellers here um you know unfortunately uh you know maybe a little more on them just just you know maybe maybe no no i don't know i i i think th- those that didn't do it for mike are also very much an important part of the story uh though jerry reinsdorf definitely didn't get dragged enough at the end of the day if he just put his big boy pants on and was like, you know what, Jerry Krause, we're fucking keeping this team together. <laughs> that 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 would have happened. You know, the team only breaks up because Krause wanted to. Like, no, that's 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 fucking stupid. Um, you know, Jordan still wanted to play. You could have convinced Scotty to stay. De- Dennis was gone. Um, I'm sure Phil Jackson could have been convinced. You know. You know, who knows if they would have won because it was a strike shortened season, so it was really hard on older teams. But you know, it it's still sad that it ended how it ended. You know, for off the court stupid ass reasons. You know, that being said, though, you need to watch this. It's on Netflix soon, I believe, July nineteenth. And if you need that ESPN login, you know, honestly, hit me up. I would gladly show somebody this because y'all need to see this uh it just shows everyone how sort of above everyone michael was and how powerful his image was you know maybe the first non-royal slash non-political truly global superstar and you know the bro the bulls were the beatles they were the circus coming to town they were you know they just they were and without the Bulls breaking up, who knows what Philly Jackson does. Maybe Shaq and Kobe never get their coach. You know, maybe Chris Webber has a ring. Who the fuck knows? Michael is still the greatest ever. I'll debate it with you if you really want. You know, I'm talking to Braun stands. You know, and I don't know if we'll ever truly see another player that plays the game like this. You know, enjoy the doc and for what it is and the lessons that it sort of offers you know as long as you're winning not committing crimes and keeping being yourself to the, your fullest extent don't apologize for it and live in the moment and i think it's absolutely perfect that they ended the documentary with um the pearl jam song i i believe it's like a place in time or presence in time something something about being present but that, that, I mean, that's what it is. That's that's what the doc was. I really hope everyone enjoyed it. So that was the pod. Thank you so much for everyone who stuck around and listened. I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Uh, check out our streams Wednesdays and Fridays from 7 to 10 on YouTube. We're having a lot of fun on there. Check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Twitter. We're a little more active on Instagram than we are on Twitter, but we're changing that. Uh, You know, again, just please uh, rate, review, subscribe, like, uh, comment, follow, all, all of the social media buzzwords, you know them. That's that's what I'm asking you to do. At plan underscore C underscore pod, uh, if you want to check that out. Actually, I believe it's um, not, not plan C pod, but <laughs> plan C podcast. Um, that's for the Twitter. I, I, or not for the Twitter. That's for both Twitter and Instagram. I confuse our email. You know, the email is plan C pod, but the Twitter and stuff is plan underscore C underscore podcast. So, you know, these, these things get jumbly in my head. Anyway, keep your eye out for all new content coming your way. Thank you again for listening. Hope everyone is staying safe. Hope everyone's families are staying safe. We really appreciate your listen. 
have a great day.